we decided that a permutation is arranging objects. And a combination is groups of objects. Okay, the order. So the order matters when we permutate things. I care about orange black is different than black orange in a permutation. But in a combination, that doesn't matter. Orange, black, different than black, orange. But on a combination, those aren't different because it's the group of those two markers and I don't care about the order of them. Okay, so a permutation, there's formulas here. So we're gonna write them down and you're gonna have no idea what they mean. And a combination That's what it looks like. And you're going to have no idea right now what that is that you wrote, and that's fine. We'll dive into it. Okay. So let's let's pick four letters. So A B C D. write two letters. Okay, so I need to write two letters and I'm permutating them, so I'm worried about the order. Okay, so we could have written an A, B. What's another thing we could have written down? B, A. What else? A, C. C, A. A, D, C, A. B, C, C, B. C, D, D, C. I think there's something else. Am I missing? We have A, D. B, D, D, B. So those are the all the ways I could have written them down. So how many options was that? Twelve. Okay, so we're not going to ever do this by hand. What would I want to type in my calculator? So how many objects did I have originally? Four. And I'm going to work with two. And what letter do I use? So our options are P or C. P, because I'm worried about the order. So can you try typing that in? And we decided we should get 12 when we type it in. Did we, did it work? Did we get 12? Okay, so A, B, C, D are my options. I need to pick two letters. So if I'm just picking two letters, I don't really care about the way they're in order. K, 
Okay, so I could pick A and a B. What's another option of two letters I can pick? A, C, A, D. I could pick B and C. I could pick B and D. C and D. So there should be six groups that I could pick. So if I wanted to test that out, what would I type in my calculator? So there was four letters, and I'm going to choose two of them. Okay? So ch type that in. We know we should be getting a six. Okay. So um, this is the same idea here. 5C2, 5P2. Okay. Um, so the same idea I'm just showing you. This is a combo. So here's all the combos I could have. This one's a permutation. So it includes a 1, 2, and a 2, 1. Because I can count those as two different things in a permutation. Okay. Let's get the number of this. Can you get me the number on your calculator by just typing those in? Can you go five, choose two? Using that button on your calculator. So I got a 10 on that one. Is that what you got? And this one's a 20. Okay, I will do the formula, but I have to actually do this next page first, and then we'll go back. Okay. Factorial. Okay, so this says four, and then it's an exclamation point, which is called a factorial in math. So four factorial really means this in math. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so I'm going to do this by hand just to show you. 4 times 3 is 12 times 2 is 24. Okay, but I don't want to do that every time. So I have a button. So I'm going to go 4 and then my button is here n exclamation. For those of you who had done your other one with the probability button, it's under that section. So I'm just going to walk, give me a wave if you have no idea where your button is. Oh, that is. Exclamation point. Yeah, that could be it. Yep, yep. You go twenty-four. Yeah. Button. Yeah. Yeah, that worked. That's 24. We had that. Did you push it? Push that? Yep. Equals and should be 24. Good? Yeah. Good. Good. There were any buttons? Oh, look at this. Lovely. Oh, my goodness. Oh boy. Okay. Seven factorial. So, how would I write it out? Seven times six, five, four, three. How do I know where to stop? What do I go down to? All the way to one. Okay, so I obviously don't want to do that by hand. So, can you try doing that with a special button? And then you can see if your answer matches mine. If you can find your button for that. Okay. Good. 
that button. Okay, so when we see these formulas, when we look at N, that's going to be the total objects. And R is the number of objects that we want, right? So before, when I said I had three markers, and then I only wanted two of them. If I tell you this, does this make sense? No, wait. I said it backwards. And yeah, sorry, I did it backwards. If I tell you this, what does that mean to you? R is not allowed to be greater than N. Example. Do you think this would work? You have eight objects total. You can't be picking with 10 objects then, right? Okay, does that make sense? <clears throat> okay, so let's, now that we know what a factorial is, let's go back to this. Okay, so here's, formula from your formula sheet. Okay, so I'm going to label this. The 5 is the N, the 2 is the R, so 5 factorial N is 5, so I'm going to put 5 factorial. R is 2, so 2 factorial. And what is this value? What is the N subtract R? What number would that be? 3. Okay, what does... 5 factorial look like if you wanted to multiply a bunch of stuff? What would it look like? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial. 2 times 1. Times 3 factorial. 3 times 2 times 1. What do you know about things cancelling? Does that make sense? Those would all cancel. The top is 20, the bottom is 2. So what should we get as an answer? 10. Okay. Okay, so let's try this with the P formula, the permutation formula. So here's what we wrote down from our formula sheet. Okay, so N factorial would be five factorial. And the N subtract R would be three factorial. Okay, now I'm gonna do something a little different. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that that continues. Why do you think I knew that I should, could stop there? Because this was the idea in my head. I knew 3 and beyond, and I looked at the bottom, the 3 and beyond, I knew that that would all cancel. So what should that number be? 20. So you see how our formula matches what we did in our calculator. 
You can, but somewhere along the line you might see some of these and you have to solve them with the equation stuff. So. Okay, calculate the number of ways you can arrange three people. We have three people, three chairs. What kind of letter would I want this to be? So ask yourself this question in your head. Are you worried about the order of the people on the chairs or are you just worried about the group of people? Are we worried about the order, yes or no to that? Yes, so if we're worried about the order, it's a P. Okay, I'm going to give you a different way to look at that. Okay, I'm going to show you that those three things are my chairs. I have three chairs. Okay. Ready? I go to put a person on my first chair. How many options do I have available for a person here? I have three people. I can put any person on that chair. Okay. Now I'm ready to put somebody on my second chair. How many people do I have to pick from now? Two. Then how many people do I have here? One. That's another way to think about that question. Okay, calculate the way you can arrange three people on two chairs. So this time I have two chairs. How many people could I put on my first chair? How many options do I have? Three. Then how many options do I have on my second chair? Two. So this should be six. And in a formula way, it would look like that. Because we're arranging. That's why it's a P. We're arranging objects. How many ways could you arrange eight people using three chairs? Okay, so here I'll do it both ways. So if I put three chairs out and I have eight people, how many people could I put on my first chair? Eight. So that person sits down. So now I have seven and then I have six. Okay. This idea of arranging is a permutation. And then what would I do here? 8P3. So do these two methods, are they the same number? So that's what's going on. Okay, simplify this expression. Okay, 91 factorial and an 89 factorial. Which one should I start expanding out? I'm going to start expanding out and I'm going to get to a spot where I can stop. Which one of the two should I start expanding? The 91, so the, the goal is to expand the larger one. So I'm going to start with a 91 times, what's next? 90 times 89, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's just going to keep going down. But I'm going to stop there because what do I notice? Anything from there on would cancel and I would get... <coughs> Um, if you tried to type that in your calculator, it wouldn't do it anyway. So, it's such a big number that your calculator can't handle it. So, 
Okay, how many outfits can you make if your outfit consists of a shoe, a shirt, and a pant? Okay, so am I concerned about the order of my objects or am I concerned about the groupings of my objects? Mm -hmm. Groupings. So those were my questions. Am I concerned about the groupings of them or the order of them? So I'm concerned about the group of my objects. Okay, so I have four shoes and we decided groupings. So I'm gonna use the choice, the combination. How many shoes are you gonna pick in your outfit? You have to pick a shoe. You have to pick a shoe. And, so as soon as I hear the word and, I'm going to times, what else do I have to do? I have to choose a shirt. So I have 10 different options for shirts. And I have to choose a pant. So, by the way, this number is just 4, this number is just 10, and this number is just 8. But that's what you're doing. You're choosing one from each. Okay. I don't know. I don't want to blow your brains up too much. So I'm going to stop, but I feel like I want to do a few in your book. Okay, you're going to do page one. <clears throat> but let's go to page one. Let's talk about... Question one, explain why a locker combo combination should really be called a locker permutation. So you know how you used to have lockers and you used to have locks for them. Everyone always called it a lock, locker combination. Okay, why should it actually be called a permutation? What do you do when you do your numbers in there? The, does the order of your numbers matter? Yeah. So that's basically all you'd write there because the order of your numbers matter. Okay, flip the page to number two. So question eight. Question eight. Okay, we're gonna simplify this and we're gonna use our formula. So do you remember our formula here? It's Okay, so you that's the formula. So what do I replace this with? It's actually going to get replaced with an n plus 3. Whatever I see in this position is that. R factorial gets replaced with a 2 factorial. And you have to do the first thing, subtract the second thing in this spot. So the first thing, subtract the second thing. So that's, does that make sense? It's not just an N, it's because we have extra stuff in there. 
Okay, so I think next I might simplify that bracket. Are we okay to think that that is n plus 1? Does that make sense? Okay, do you remember we just did um, a 91 factorial, 89 factorial? We just made a rule. Always start to expand the number that's bigger. So out of this or this, which one of those is a bigger value? The top or the bottom? The top. Okay, so I'm going to expand it. If you go down, what's going down one from that? N plus two. If you go down, then the next is N plus one. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop at that because I'm looking at the bottom value. Okay, I'm also going to expand 2 factorial, which is really just 2. Okay, so this would cancel that. And it says to simplify, so what do I do with this top part if I want to simplify it? Foil it, so n squared plus 5n plus 6 over 2. Okay, that's it. So you're going to do, there's 12 questions. So page 1 and 2, and then there's a 12th question.